been quite a nice day out on the Elul Shoal. We're sitting on the north point of the shoal here. We started off way down south where we looked at a group of the black tip sharks. This is the area that these black tip sharks have basically made their home. The upper water column is their home and you can really see how fluidly they move. Agile, pelagic predators. All of a sudden a dolphin appeared from below me and the sharks were still bunched around me near the surface. The dolphin was on its own and wasn't very brave, was quite timid, not coming too close. You see the dolphin giving way to one of the black tips. I hopped across to the cathedral in the boat and swimming through the arch, I was horrified to see no ragged tooths. This is normally such a trusty location for these animals. And I managed to find one lone, beaten up looking ragged tooth right in the back of the cave looking a little bit worse for wear. The top of the tail fin either bitten or cut off. Not exactly a prime specimen of the ragged tooth shark species. So I decided to move on and I swam hectically further north all the way across to the Raggy's cave area. A nice big one in the foreground, a couple in the cave itself but still not really the numbers of ragged tooths that we've been seeing. Here you can see the difference between the black tips and the, and the ragged tooth. This shark can tend to float at the opening of Raggy's cave, just feathering its tail, keeping the water moving over its gills. The ragged tooth also like to spend a lot of time right near the bottom in dark crevices and are far less agile and far less frenetic and don't seem to have the same sort of insatiable appetite. Out on the sandy patches, the sharks had congregated, having moved out of the, the darker caves. And this is a change. I mean, maybe we're seeing something evolving here in the breeding cycle of these sharks. But plenty of sharks away from their usual strongholds, which is a change for us. The first animals that uh, Grant came across on this particular dive were these little razor fish. And uh, adapting the, the sort of green tinge that you find within this grass and unless they move, very, very difficult to, to spot. There is quite a bit of structure within the estuary and most of it comes in the form of old trees and old root systems that have over the years been brought down by the, by the currents and by the rivers and a lot of animals use these particular structure systems for refuge and for hiding and here's one of the big estuary swimming crabs hiding under one of the, the big logs. And once you start really diving into the beds of the seagrass, you start coming up with all sorts of strange animals. One of these little animals that Grant found this morning was one of the conga eels. An eel that spends most of his life in, in the sand will come out 
at night and uh, he's more of a, a nocturnal feeder than, than feeding during the day. Extremely powerful jaws these have and uh, they normally feed along the bottom picking up all sorts of little crustaceans and again carrion, any sort of dead flesh and meat that they can find on the bottom. The shell on the top of the white shell that you can see which is a white mussel is, is a whelk and uh, he actually traps these little white mussels and then bores a hole into them and this process will take about two to three days and once he's bored a little hole into this particular mussel, he'll start feeding on the little mussel that you find within the shell. Possibly the, the best find of the day was when Grant spotted this crowned seahorse. One of those animals that are absolute masters in, in disguise and camouflage. This animal was actually hunting and uh, you don't often see them hunting during the day and what he's feeding on is tiny little crustacea. Those little things that you can see floating around. He mainly uses his tail for holding on and anchoring himself down to the bottom on any, any structure that's within his grasp. Here he's using the, the seagrass and some of the, the other weed that we found floating on the bottom. Another fantastic day here in Pomen and uh, another one to really, really remember. It didn't take us long to head back up to our favorite little spot where once again we found a lot of different small groups of whales dotted across the ocean. The small group that we can see here seem to be two smaller males and one larger female. And obviously the males were competing for the female's attention. Not only do these southern right whales calf now in this time of year, there's also a lot of mating that goes on in these sheltered bays. As the days started to wear on, the wind started picking up. It didn't seem to perturb or disrupt the, the mother and the calf pairings. They all have moved in quite shallow now, all sitting between the back line and perhaps about 300 meters out to sea. Possibly this is the area where you get a lot more shelter from these winds. Obviously giving the newborns a lot, lot more protection here and there's not so much surge and drop on the ocean surface so that they can obviously climatize and get used to the water. Getting in and amongst these huge southern right whales is just an absolute privilege.